Hey there everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. I'm bringing to you yet another video in my motor series. And I have been making motor series videos recently and these videos are focused on maintenance procedures for motors for vintage sewing machines. And this is not a rewiring tutorial, this is how you would take a motor that's in good condition, that's running well, but you, it's time, you know, maybe you're getting a vintage sewing machine and you're wanting to overhaul it, give it a full restoration, reconditioning, and <clears throat> there are certain maintenance procedures that motors like to get. They don't require them often. It's not the same as when you're, you know, cleaning your feed dogs and uh, oiling the, the, the oil points of your machine for normal uh, sewing. But there are two parts of a sewing machine motor that require maintenance. One of them is the brushes, uh, of which there are two, and the other is the bearing sets, of which there are also two. Now, I have shown you in the prior videos, you saw an older uh, machine uh, motor that was the, the rotary motor, that dark green rotary machine. And of course, it had very easy access to its bearings, as you, you may recall. If not, take a look at that video. You'll see what I'm mentioning. Um, and those bearings required lubrication with grease, and they had grease wicks. And I show you guys how to replace the grease wicks. Later motors, uh, uh, by all of the manufacturers, they all eventually went to motors that had bearings that were to be lubricated with sewing machine oil and not grease. And in some ways, it's actually more convenient. Now, whether they last as long as greased bearings, I'm not sure. I can't really speak to that. But the point here is, <clears throat> for most of the vintage period, uh, the, the, the motor you're looking into the mouth of here is a 1960s uh, white 164 model. And all of you have seen this machine. I've been putting it in different videos. It's a straight stitcher. Beautiful. Uh, really mint condition and strong sewer in great shape. And uh, it has a motor mounted on the back like many machines of the period. And later they would put the, you know, the covers on them so you couldn't see them and they had vent holes and what have you. And I showed you that on the Janome. Now I've mentioned to all of you something curious that is, is kind of something I've observed after looking at machines that uh, go all the way back over 100 years, all the way up to more recent machines. And as you go through time and you come toward the present, sewing machines, like a lot of other products for consumers, become less easy or simple to maintain. Just getting access to the device and being able to perform maintenance becomes more and more challenging. Um, you can still do it, of course, and almost all of the machines that I've ever had you know, I, I didn't have a problem servicing them. Um, a good example of this would be the Janome Freearm from the late 70s that all of you have seen. Uh, you may have seen in my video, I have a whole series on that. That's called a hybrid vintage machine. These are vintage models from the very late period that are not all metal, but close. And uh, that's a whole other subject. But the reason I wanted to highlight this for you is that when I showed you the Janome uh, video, I highlighted how I maintenance the motor. And you'll notice that unlike a lot of other features in sewing machines where they were, you know, they were eliminating the top oiling points in the machine. And, uh, and with the Janome, you know, you have to remove uh, access panels and plates to get to the underside. Whereas in, in the old days, you just flip the machine over and there was everything ready to be oiled. What's curious though, is that unlike these other features that they, for maintenance, that they kept trying to sort of hide and camouflage away, sewing machine motors were a little different. If you could get to the motor, uh, a lot of motors, as you go through time, had what the other motors that I have shown all of you thus far had. You had a place to uh, lubricate the bearings and you had a little uh, uh, brush cap they're called they're basically little screws and they exist on two sides of the motor one underneath and one above and you would you would turn those to get access to the brush and you guys saw me on the genome i pulled the you know i pulled the uh spring out and um uh and out comes the brush and of course you know then i'm showing you guys uh the brush and you know we're checking to see if it's long enough if it's if it's got too much wear etc and what's interesting is this motor on this white model you see, it was actually made about 15 years before the Janome motor. And while all of these motors, once we get out of the 50s and we move into the 60s and 70s, 
right? actually even in the 1950s, you will see motors that look like this, <clears throat> and they require uh, lubrication of the uh, bearings. So I'll go ahead and show this to you. You saw this on the Janome uh, motor, but I'll show you what this motor has in common. Uh, <clears throat> and again, this is one of those one of those things that you, if you're going to do this, you want to be very exact, okay? First thing to do, of course, is unplug your machine. Never have a machine plugged in when you're doing any kind of work on it. Uh, I have to remind myself that, and it's good for all of us to remind each other. Um, but just like I showed you on the Janome, this is one side of, the, uh, of this sewing motor, and you see large openings here. <clears throat> And these openings are for air, and you'll see them on the other side because the other side of the motor has a little fan inside that turns and, you know, just kind of, uh, it, it moves heat out of the motor, and it works very well. Now, the other thing you will see are two holes like this, and these are, they have little brass grommets. These are, are actually grommets that hold the uh, uh, part of the structure of the motor to this shell because this, this big gray piece you see here is kind of like a giant shell that covers the motor and protects it, gives it a place to exist. Um, now, these are only for support. There's only one spot on this motor on this side that you're going to put lubrication. And as I mentioned, uh, now this is, you know, uh, motors that take grease and grease wicks for their bearings disappeared quite some time ago. And now you have bearings that require one drop of sewing machine oil. Some of you will have manuals that will actually tell you about this and the manuals should go to the extra length to emphasize that you only put one drop. Now normally, I've, as, I've, as I've shown you folks in some of my other videos, when you're going to get a machine oiled before you're going to sew with it, you put one drop in the oiling points um, in the various places of the machine, the drivetrain spots where you have metal uh, that requires lubrication. but Oh, it wanted to drip on me here. Uh, but when it comes to bearings in the motor, you don't oil them every time you sew a project. It's not like the rest of the oiling maintenance on your machine. This is something you might do once a year, okay? Depending on how many hours you sew with the machine. But this is crucial. Uh, when a machine is in, in great condition or you're using it, you're just gonna oil it to get it to sew, you always use one drop. If I restore a machine, some of you may have seen me, I'll sometimes put more than one drop when a machine has been sitting for years and it's dry. But that is one thing you never do with the motor. Keep in mind, there is no oil reservoir here. This little hole sits right on top of where the bearings are gonna be ready to receive lubrication and there is no place to store oil, okay? So I'm gonna show you what I do to oil it. I'm gonna put one drop on this little oiler, and I've got my little needle tip oiler here. If you don't have one, you can use your oil bottle, and you'll have, you should have a spout on it of some sort, but be careful, because when they say one drop, and it only goes in one place, it goes right there. This hole, when your motor is right side up, will always be above, okay? It'll be at 12 o'clock if you look at this big circle. And that's the only hole that you can put this one drop of sewing machine oil for your bearings. If you put oil anywhere else in this motor, you will destroy it and it will be ruined. Uh, you, you, motor, electric motors don't take lubrication the way the rest of the machine does. So be extra careful, okay? You might be tempted if it's an old machine and you think, well, gosh, the motor has sat for 10 years. Unlike other areas of the machine where you can get away with a, an extra drop or two when it's dry as a bone, you cannot do this here. Even if it hasn't been touched in 30 years, put one drop of sewing machine oil. Please, just the, the, the manufacturers told us this for a reason and you don't want to create a mess because it's not just a mess. If you get oil in the motor in places it doesn't need to be, um, that is going to really, it could ruin a, a perfectly, a, a otherwise perfectly great motor. Okay, so let's turn her around and I'm going to show you this other side. So if you have a machine like this, and again, these were made, uh, you know, anywhere from the 50s um, all the way to, to the early 70s. Um, and they still make sewing machine motors that look like this. The new motors uh, do not have, a lot of them, I have yet to see any of the new sewing machine motors that you can get as a uh, as a retrofit for these old machines. I don't see this because they've a lot, largely done away with that 
ability to lubricate bearings at all. They basically call them lifetime sealed. And any of you who've ever dealt with machinery know that lifetime sealed doesn't mean, you know, uh, generations, right? It, it works until it stops. And then unfortunately you have to discard it unless you have a way to get to it. So on this side, you guys, I'll, I'll let you see me. I'll just put one drop of oil in that hole. That's it. I mean, it was literally that fast. And I know it doesn't seem like much, but it's a lot for what this motor does. Now I'm gonna turn my hand wheel. Let me loosen, I'll loosen the clutch knob here so the needle doesn't need to go rolling around. And by turning this, the drive shaft of the motor is turning on the bearings and they are pulling that oil into them. That's literally all you have to do. But here's the reason I really wanted to show you all this video because unlike other, uh, other design changes that companies made in order to make their machines less easy to maintenance by the average person. One thing they didn't necessarily do was to change motor access. You can find brand new sewing machine motors online and many of them will still have what that Janome motor had, this, the late 70s one. It has, of course, the brush caps where you can go in and access your brushes. You can go down and clean the commutator with a little uh, alcohol and cotton swab as I showed you all. However, sometimes, and I, and I don't know why they did this, because the White Sewing Machine Company, just like all the others, you know, they ran for a long time. A lot of their motors had, uh, they looked like this, and they had brush caps, but this one does not. I'm gonna tilt this toward all of you so you can see this. Take a look, guys. Here's the top of the motor. There are no brush caps here. These are just little indents here. That's not your brush cap. There are none. Now this machine, or this motor rather, it has two brushes, and they are, just past this little, let's zoom back in here. They are, the motor brushes sit just past this grill, probably about a half inch in or something like that. Unfortunately, <clears throat> you cannot access them. Uh, and, and here's why I'm gonna suggest that you do not, but simply use the motor. This motor, this machine I suspect did not get a lot of use. It was very well taken care of. But of course you don't know based on, just based on the aesthetics. So with these motors, if you know of a way to uh, access the brushes without disassembling the motor, let me know. Because if the motor is disassembled, what happens is the commutator, which is the big copper ring, you know, it's a big ring on the inside, those motor brushes push on the, on the, the commutator, that big ring. If you pull that out to get to the brushes, because remember you can't get to them on this side, the brushes are going to want to push in and they'll probably just fall into the motor housing. You can get the brushes, but then you've got to get them back in. And that is really, I don't currently have a method or a strategy for doing that. Because when you go to put the commutator back in, you've got to be able to somehow uh, you know, restrain the brushes in order to get the commutator in and then release that strain on the brushes so that the springs push them back onto the commutator. For any of you who uh, are seeing the video, if you have any ideas, let me know. So what should you do? If you have a machine with a motor like this, by all means use it. Do the one drop of lubrication in your bearings and enjoy the use of the motor. You have options if <clears throat> for some reason the, 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 uh, the motor in the future should ever need replacement. Uh, brushes last a very long time. They take a while to, 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 uh, to need replacement. You can either get a very easy replacement for this motor, and you can even use a vintage motor or a new replacement, but I would suggest getting one with the little brush access caps, if you can. If you have a machine with a motor like this, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. They're very strong, powerful motors. In fact, they're pretty much the same design. If you see some of the other white machines that I've shown, uh, from this same period or those of any of the other brands, even most of the white machines of this same vintage had brush caps. Why they would run a specification without, I'm not sure. You know, companies make running production changes all the time. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted you guys to see that because you may have a sewing machine motor and you're, you, you know, you've seen a video where someone's going in and they're doing brush inspection. And just like one of my viewers who, uh, I think uh, one of you commented and said, hey, what happens if you have a motor and you can't get to the brushes? Uh, right now, I am currently looking for a method to be able to do this. I know how to take the shell of the motor casing apart, but again, if I do that, uh, 
I have no way to get the commutator in with the brushes back seated where they belong. So if there's a device that any of you have seen, let me know. Uh, another option for you, if your motor needs uh, replacement, if it's not performing well, you could take it to a sewing vacuum center. They may be able to work out on it on their bench, and they may have some sort of special tool. This is going to be a very specialized tool for motor repair. And they may have a way to do that. Uh, there are also companies um, you know, in, in many cities that work on generators and electric motors generally, and they might find this you know, pretty simple motor and small compared to the things they work on. But again, um, you guys let me know if you are aware of any way to access the motors. And if you don't and you have one of these machines, as long as the motor is functioning, uh, fine. Use it and enjoy it. And all you have to do is about once a year, you'll put a drop of oil in those, in those little bearing uh, spaces I showed you. And, uh, and that's, that's it. And so this is uh, yet another motor series video. I have another, uh, a few more ideas for motor series videos, one of which is the slant omatic motor from the Singer Slant Series. Uh, one of the greatest motors ever made, and I'm going to be showing you guys a video on that soon. So stay tuned for that, and I really appreciate you watching my channel. Take care.